Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today we are going. Hi, Maddie. Hey, there's Maddie. <laughs> All right. Today. He's the guest, He's the guest picker. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are going to discuss the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55. And I've got my panel here, Chris Dufour and my brother, Jim, and we will be joined hopefully very soon by Dave Mazzini, who has been on the channel many times before. Many so, times. Well, <laughs> actually, I don't think he's been on many times. He may, maybe been on twice. But <laughs> well, twice, many. It's all the same. <laughs> One question, Bob, before we get started. All right. All in. All right. Just like Tom Brady. Just like <laughs> So in case there are people out there who have been living under a rock, the Super Bowl is coming up on Sunday, and it will pit the vaunted Kansas City Chiefs against the equally vaunted Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, so what are, what are some of your guys' thoughts on that game coming up? Well, well. Before we get started, do you have the helmets? I no. I well, I do. <laughs> I'm not gonna. We do gotta it. chuck at least one helmet on this show. <laughs> There's no way we're having a Super that's, Bowl extravaganza without chucking a helmet. That's become your signature. <laughs> usually, usually, chucking the helmets or putting them in a garbage can is reserved to bad teams, and we really can't call either one of these two teams bad. True, but I don't know if they're both equally vaunted. I think the Chiefs might be vaunted a little bit more than the Buccaneers. Whatever yeah. that vaunted means. Yes. You didn't know what vaunted means. I like, I, lo I like how you stretch to use it, but I'm not sure they're equally vaunted. I just okay. want to point that out at the start. All right. All right. Yes, that's a good, that's a good starting point. So since you're saying that they're not equally vaunted, who do you think has the edge? Who would you say has the edge in this game? Me? Yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, you're as good a place to start as any. Uh, who has the edge in this game, man? That's, I mean, that's like a question for the end of the program, not the start of the program. I don't. Uh, there's different edges in different parts, you know. Uh, All right, let's let's start with the offense. Who do you who? I'll I'll start with you, Chris. Who do you think has the better <laughs> offense? Look at this guy who brought his guns. He brought the gun show. <laughs> brought the gun show and the tattoo show and the beard show. I mean, we got it all going on tonight. All right. So Dave has joined. Is this, is this WWE Raw or is this a Super Bowl show? I, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know. Are you inside or outside? Because you're dressed like <laughs> snow. <laughs> hey, when you make as much as I do, you keep it cool, brother. <laughs> All right. I got we're getting off the we're getting off the track now. I was hoping we get to this point now, early in the show. Now I Bob, do have editing to Bob, do. Bob, where are you? <laughs> Did you redo the basement, Bob? No. Yeah. In one day. <laughs> so anyway, we were discussing who has who do you think has the better offense in this game, Kansas City or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? That is an insane question that's the kansas city chiefs <laughs> all right so are we in agreement on that what did they did they say the same thing well uh, we didn't get there yet we were just learning uh what doof thought of uh of the we're question. waiting for you dave <laughs> i have never i keep saying i keep belaboring this but i've never in my 40 years of watching football seen anyone as fast or quick as tariq hill ever it, and, and I changed my mind. I don't, you can't. Combination of straight of uh, world class speed and quickness. I've never seen anything like it. Wait till you see Scotty Miller then. No, I, I've seen. Him. I've seen. <laughs> well, Scotty Miller says he can beat Tyreek in a race. So I'm just saying. Well, I don't, well what's happening in, in their careers then? Because if you compare the two. Yeah, it doesn't seem like. Uh... Maybe a race is what Scotty's really hoping for. Yeah, yeah, great. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. Then, we'll see. I hope it's the Scotty Miller Super Bowl myself. 
Yeah, I have nothing against Scotty Miller, but I think he's drunk to think he's – he knows he's not the, the type of player Tariq Hill is. Can we say that on Sportsman Z? Can we, can we say drunk? Say what? <laughs> drunk? Is yeah. that a language barrier? All right, I just want to make no, sure. No, that's – I mean, that's fine. <laughs> well, you're the leader here. You're the, you're the circus. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> – Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's yeah. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jimmy is, is too bark. silent for me. Can we get Jimmy talking about something, please? No, I'm just, you know, I'm waiting for this answer, Doof. I mean, I, I'm in I'm in concurrence with uh with uh Dave. I, I think the Chiefs have an edge offensively. Um, look, and if you just look at the play callers, the enemy versus Leftwich. I mean, give me a break. So I like Leftwich. What's wrong with Leftwich? Nothing's wrong with him. I just think when you compare, it's like comparing Tariq Hill with Scotty Miller. It's just a different level of play calling, I think, with the enemy. Roy Why Green that... and Chris Dufour, that kind of comparison. And, and by the way, do you guys watch um, uh, pro football talk very often? Because Mike Florio and Chris Sims, they have a real hang up with the fact that the enemy has not been offered a head coaching job. I mean, I do. I mean, yeah, I he deserves it. He, he does. If he you does. want to say that he does deserve a head coaching job, that's great. But they talk about it all the time. They harp on it and harp on it and harp on it. I'm like, what are you, the 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 B enemy like rooting section? Yeah, and Dave, you might, on it. It's Dave, you might recall that <laughs> in December I predicted that B enemy would be the head coach of Houston. I think you you got on me a little bit about that, so you were right. I was I was wrong. I got on you. Well, I don't. I don't know why. I don't. I think he should be a head coach. I wish. I'm he just should. saying. Kudos to you, brother. Kudos to you. <laughs> I wish Jerry Jones would just wake up one day and be like, "Wait," and he'd fire Mike McCarthy and he'd hire Eric Bieniemy. But that's just a pipe dream. So it would be better if he woke up one day and just fired himself. That would even. That would be better. It would be funny to witness, but. Yeah. The enemy is just a great play caller. I don't. I, I think part of well, there's the obvious reason. I but I think it doesn't help him every year that they go deep into the playoffs. That they probably hurts a little bit. Right. They, well, yeah. One of the things that Mike Florio was saying is that, or or really Chris Sims, both of them, is that when you're when you're always in the playoffs, and you're also interviewing for head coaching job, you have to switch back and forth. You, you know, you do it like 20 hour a day doing a, a game plan for the upcoming, you know, playoff game that you got. And then you also have to prepare for a, um, you know, for an interview with somebody. And that's tough on the coaches, you know, to have to do that switching back and forth and putting all that time in on both aspects of your life at the same time. This so is the, what I, I'm an owner. I say, look at Eric Bianami. I say, hey, give me a call at when you, whatever you guys are done winning the Super Bowl, and there's a job waiting for you. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the rush? You know. I mean, it's not like college where you got to recruit. It's not like he's he's got to recruit in February to get other you know new free agents or something. But right, he should have a job. Yes, I mean, I, and, I, and that's, I mean, he has a job. But. I agree, but like, I wouldn't talk about it every other day on my show. You know, I they're crazy. But Why anyway. you talked about America Castles every day for twenty years? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is he talking? About? Um, <laughs> I mean, come on. All right. So anyway, so yeah, I mean, obviously, I think the better offense. You got to say it's the it's the Kansas City uh, Chiefs. Um, yeah, but I mean, just saying that the Chiefs have a better offense, you know, it, it doesn't decide who wins the Super Bowl. It's like, you well, know, the Buccaneers have a very competent offense. So, you know, does it come down right. to the defenses? Are the offenses going to override the defenses? And when is but Jimmy going to speak? The the all the KC's offensive line has a guy out on COVID, and then they got injuries too. So I think that's huge. And don't forget, they're, cu they're barbers on COVID now, too. So that could be a problem. Barber? Yeah. He went under the COVID restrictions today. He got a look. Barber, as in the guy that cuts hair? That's exactly right. The Chiefs barber. He got a look. <laughs> the the game. Big news on ESPN today. We don't need those players going in with low self-esteem with bad hair. No. You want good hair on Super Bowl Sunday. I know. I mean, look at Jimmy. Jimmy did his hair for tonight. 
I mean, come on. I know. I, I didn't. So it looks and, fantastic. Right, neither did I. Thanks. I got here. We got for, the first pick is in. The first. All right, Maddie. What do you in. got tonight? The Bucks. Yeah, Maddie Grace. Tampa Maddie Grace Bay. going Tampa with Tampa. Bay. Maddie is going with Tampa Bay. Maddie, put the shirt down. Let's see you. All right. Yeah, there she is. Good pick, Maddie. Good pick. She is a big Bucks fan, a, bi a big Lightning fan. People yeah. around here think she's a front runner. I got to explain to them. Well, mom is from Tampa. This is the year of Tampa with the Rays and the Lightning and the and the Bucks. Who does who does mom think's going to win? What's her call? Uh, she never ever thinks that the Bucks will win. Okay. So they just well, keep winning, though. <laughs> maybe that's good for the Bucks. <laughs> don't have don't don't change this week, Dana. <laughs> Is it, is it the Bucks? Are you on the Bucks or no? See, I just get a shoulder shrug. I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that Maybe means. She doesn't care, I think. Yeah, right? I was going to say, generally, when my wife shoulder shrugs something I'm talking about, it means she doesn't care. <laughs> That's exactly right. Is David Ortiz getting in the Hall of Fame next year? Oh, boy. I don't know. <laughs> if they keep talking about him in the same sentence with A-Rod, he won't. All right, so now listen. I, I can't Here comes advertise. The I cannot advertise this video as a Super Bowl discussion when we're just talking about everything. All right, back to the Super Bowl. So anyway, who's playing? It's, it would be the Kansas City Chiefs against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Super Bowl Fifty Five, and I know it's Super Bowl Fifty Five because the Super Bowl in January is always the number that I'm going to be that year in October for age. Yeah, which is incredible if you think about it. You're going to be 55. I am. You don't look a day over 65. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy. Right, next question, Bobby. All right, so the next question is, who's got the better defense, do you think? I'll be more pretty... impressed if any of us can come up with the defensive coordinators for either team. Oh, no, I do know. No, I know the Buccaneers. Yes, I do not know the old, Buccaneers. A Spagnola. Oh, yeah, Spag Spagnola. Because he's beaten Brady twice in the Super Bowl with the Giants. That's so everyone knows Spagnola. Mm. Come on, the Jimmy. Playmakers on KC is Honey Badger, and then Chris Jones. But Tampa Bay's front sevens, I think way better than uh, Kansas City's front seven. Who's the guy on Tampa Bay that was uh, going wild in the Packers game and then hurt his shoulder? He was a, He's a defensive back. I, I can't even call his name right now. Murphy oh, Bunker. Not, not, uh, not Merrifield Jr. or whatever that guy. Winfield Jr. What was that guy? Mur Murphy Bunting. Murphy Bunting? No, that was the guy that was making the – I mean – it was another guy. He was just destroying the Packers. Uh, I don't know if he if he plays if he doesn't play the Bucks will be hurt. He was he was a playmaker. He's been he's been playing great in the playoffs. Yeah, it was it it began with a W, I think, but it wasn't Winfield. Yeah, yeah. I have trouble getting old. Whitehead or Whiteford? Whitehead. Well, there was a couple of might be Whitehead. There was another one. I mean, the other one they keep talking about is the son of the former. Brown safety that was so good or cornerback that was so good. He didn't play at all that game. He was out, right? Antoine Winfield's son? Yeah. So. I like list the former list, the uh, was it Devin White for the for, for Tampa the Bucks, Bay. 55. Yeah, he's he's a good. but I give edge to the the Buccaneers defense. But you know, Steve Fagnola has beaten Brady twice. He'll probably have in the same formula. I think if you get pressure on Brady, and you're going to affect how he plays. Whereas Mahomes, you know, it doesn't matter. I think you put pressure on him, he figures out a way to still get rid of the ball. Well, that always, I mean, that seems to have always been Brady's bugaboo. It's if you can get to him and rattle him a lot, he it throws him off his game. Because he's not an athlete, you know, or athletic like someone like Mahomes. He's clearly an athlete, but he's not athletic. You know, he's not nimble in the pocket. He's like Bernie Kosar in the pocket. Yeah. Jimmy, say something. <laughs> I know. I give, uh, I give the defensive edge to the Buccaneers. Yeah, I think I would too. Um. 
Don't put those guns away. Putting the blanket on, like do four. <laughs> Cold in here. Go ahead, Jimmy. Sorry to interrupt. So I give offensive edge to the Chiefs, defensive edge to the Bucks. Does Tyreek Hill return uh, kicks and punts? Hardman does. Hardman yeah. Does. Boy, I'll tell you what, Dave. That guy's almost as fast as Hill. On those end of rounds that they run, holy oh, yeah. smoke. He's lightning. My God, he was devastating to the Bills with that. After he, I mean, he fumbled and then he made it up with the whole, two I huge love runs. Them. He fumbled and they, they went right to him on that pass for the touchdown. Yeah. Reverse. Yeah. That's important. I mean, they're, they have so many skills. And weapons that I don't I don't know how the Bucks will stop them, but the good news is that in Super Bowl history these kind of matches have happened before. Where one I remember when the Broncos faced the Packers and Favre in Favre in ninety eight, ninety seven, and the Packers were so heavily favored because their offense was just so unstoppable, and the Broncos didn't have a prayer, and the Broncos won that game thirty one twenty four, and I mean that was Broncos first Super Bowl win, so it's been done. It's been done, but it's Look, not going to be easy. Seattle versus uh... – They were uh, they were interviewing uh, Sean Payton, and he said, beware the team that has won three games on the road going into yeah. the Super Bowl. Who's now playing at home, though. Yeah, uh, yes. at their home stadium. First time <laughs> ever. That's pressure. <laughs> but only 22,000 fans in the stadium, so maybe not, not as much pressure as it could have been. Right, well – yeah, it's not. And it's not like a lot of people be booing the Chiefs. I mean, they're a hard team to hate. Yeah, they they haven't quite worked up the uh, you know the uh, hate bandwagon that the Patriots have earned over the years. So, Look no, they're great. Did you see that SNL skit where uh, Josh Krasinski was Brady, and they were like, if they're like, you're the only thing that works in America right now. You you're supposed to win football games, and you win football games. Did you guys see that? No, no. I didn't see that. and then and then they and then he goes. The lady goes. Uh, the actress. She goes. Uh, so everyone must be rooting for you in the Super Bowl. And he's like, No, nobody really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's one guy, and I think you know. Besides Florida and New England, outside of those states, nobody's rooting for him. So I think that now I'm talking. All right, dude. Yes, I <laughs> like it. Yeah, the docile tones of James Zalke. I, I think if the Patriots were in the Super Bowl and Tom Brady was their quarterback, people would hate him. Yeah. Now he's not in New England. Now he's a good story. Now he took an average team mm -hmm. to another level and got to the Super Bowl, and now people are rooting for him. So now he's he's kind of back on, in the good graces. But I think if he was still the Patriots quarterback and the Patriots were there for like the 12th time or 15th time in 18 years – People would be like, no, I'm tired of them. Well, see, and that's the thing. The Chiefs are, I mean, they look like a team that could do something similar. I don't want to say exactly the same, but similar to what the Patriots have done, where they go year after year. Sometimes they lose the Super Bowl. A lot of times maybe they make it to the AFC Championship. But they look like a team that's going to be doing that type of thing. And eventually a lot of people hate them too. I think you're right. I mean, it's it, it, and it's all about Mahomes. Is if he stays healthy, you know? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if they, as long as they surround him with mediocre talent, they're going to win some games. I mean, right now he's got otherworldly talent in, in Kelsey and Hill and Hardman. I mean, there's no way. You know, it's very difficult to stop. So, and he technically like, third straight Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. they're offsides away from going to the Super Bowl two years ago. Yeah, that was a crazy yeah. play. So I just think Mahomes is harder to dislike. He's just so likable. Like New England was just like kind of boring. They just bored you to death and won. Whereas <laughs> City, they, they, like, those guys have like fun. You know, they're yeah. and it's their coach. And, you know, because Andy Reid's not like Bill Belichick. You know, he's got a personality, or at least he shows it. But I, I will say that. The one, the one thing that we haven't talked about that I do think is sometimes overlooked is Andy Reid. Yeah. I mean, what, it, what the Philadelphia guy here is going to say, he went to, what, five NFC championship games with the Eagles? He just only happened to win one of them. 
to get to the Super Bowl. But now he's back to, like Dave said, almost, you know, an offsides away from three straight in KC. He's, he's had a pretty good coaching career. <laughs> he has. He's had a great coaching career. He's, uh, I mean, a lot of people got on him in Philly, man. He was ridden hard in Philly and despite all the wins, uh, but that's that kind of town. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I love Bruce Arians too. I think that guy's always been super smart. So just cause it's his first one. As the head coach, right? Yeah. As a head coach. I mean, he's been there before. Yeah. So I don't know. He's, he's, I like the way he goes about his business. He's had a good career. I mean, what he was the defensive coordinator for the Steelers for a while in a couple of their Super Bowls. Is that he right? He didn't become a head coach until he was 60. Wait, yeah. didn't he, so he? Who brought the Cardinals to the Super Bowl? Wasn't he the coach? I think he was on the staff. Was he the head coach? Wisenhunt, maybe? Was Wisenhunt the? Ken Wisenhunt? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think it was. I don't think it was Arians. It wasn't Arians when they went to the Super Bowl. Wisenhunt. <laughs> <laughs> He just got fired from Utah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cardinals only Super Bowl things. But... <laughs> I think it's going to come down to the kickers, though. That's what I think. No. <laughs> I Remember, get the, hey, the edge. Ryan Ryan Chiefs, Suck up will be MVP. I don't, I don't trust him as much as I trust uh, – what's his name? Bucker? Bucker. Yeah. Bucker. Well, he's missed a ton of extra points this year. He's missed like yeah. eight extra and but no field goals. Yeah. <laughs> he's missed more extra points than he's missed field goals. That's obscene. <laughs> yeah, I think this is one of those Super Bowls, maybe where like an MVP is like somebody like like not a well known player. Like who's the guy who was the, in the Seattle Super Bowl? Like I didn't even know. Can you even remember his name, Jim? Uh, the linebacker. He was a linebacker. The linebacker that went to the 49ers, right? He ended up going over the 49ers? Yeah. yeah I don't even know. Like, was it no, Nickerson no. or something? It should have been Cliff Averill, the nose tackle, but they weren't going to give it to him. Cliff Averill recovered the fumble in the end zone on the first play or tackled Peyton Manning. Did he tackle Peyton Manning on the first play, Do for what did he recover the fumble? No, if, as I recall, they threw the ball 40 feet over Manning, Manning's head on the first play. Yeah, and then did Manning jump on it in the end zone and Abel tackled him, or did Abel... Yeah. Throw... The safety. It was a safety. Yeah, safety, so yeah. So he did that, and then he had a... He knocked down a key, like, third down pass in the game, like Cliff Aver And the, the interception that the linebacker had, which was the reason that they gave him the uh was it was tipped at the line by Avril. I was I just remember like I was happy they won, but I was like, man, how did Cliff Abel not get MVP of that Super Bowl? But I'd like to see uh Taryn Matthew give uh MVP of the Super Bowl. That would be great. Yeah, I mean that would be awesome. A guy like that or I mean, you know, maybe it's somebody like Hardman who's a little bit in the shadows, you know, or or Scotty Miller, you know, maybe it is. Maybe Scotty Miller. <laughs> you know, I'd love to see Scotty Miller get it. But, I thought uh, last year the Chiefs fullback or whatever, the running back that they got. Williams? I he should, yeah, I thought he should have won it last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah he had I a thought good he had a really good Super Bowl and, like, key runs. But I guess they don't really look at that. So, it's like. Well, in the Super Bowl, yeah, they look at the quarterback almost exclusively. <laughs> If yeah. he has a good game, he's going to get it over anybody else. That guy had key runs on their last drive, and then he he kept the ball away from uh, San Francisco, so they couldn't get down the field. Well, with the way these two quarterbacks throw the ball, do you think that either of these teams are going to be able to run, have a success? I mean, because that'll be a key, I think, for the Bucks if they can run the ball and mm -hmm. gain yardage. They did that against the Packers. I think that helped I set Brady that. up. The I think it's a bigger key. The, the rookie running back for Kansas City, he's out, right? Or is he? Or is he still? Uh, rookie, oh, no, he came back last game. Okay. It's, okay. If he's back, well, he's good. He's. I mean, he, he definitely gives them a serious running threat. And they've been using that Daryl Williams. And I don't – Le'Veon Bell, is he available? So, I believe he is. Yeah. I think it's a bigger key for the Chiefs because if the Chiefs add a running game to their attack, do you stop Mahomes? Do you stop Tyreek Hill? Do you stop their running back? Do you stop Travis Kelsey? Like, pretty soon the Buccaneers are like, look, we can't stop everyone. 
Somebody's well, going to have a big day. That's my problem with the, the Bucks picking the Bucks to win is how, you know, can they stop everyone? Because the, the uh, Chiefs running attack isn't just off tackle and, and full buck buck. You know, it's, uh, it's these end runs that just chew up huge amounts of yardage for them. And if you're not prepared for that because you're, you know, you're trying to defend the pass, those things are killers. Well, even the quick passes, are, it's like their running game, like a quick pass to Tariq Hill or a yeah. shovel. Yeah, no, the, the wide receiver screens and stuff, yeah. That's the running game. And I, I think the Bucks are going to fo- focus on Tariq Hill because he, he murdered him the last game. I think they're going to focus on taking him out of the game because like, if- big, big plays give you all that energy. Like he annihilated the first game they when they played him this year. He had 200 yards, two touchdowns, and seven catches in the first quarter. And I don't think they're going to want to get embarrassed like that. So they're going to try to neutralize him. Well, we'll see. But to me, the key to the Chiefs' offense is Kelsey. Uh, he opens up that middle of the field so much, yeah. and that opens up everything else. And if you so, you got a key on him. Shut him down, and you got to shut down Hill. So you got to pick your poison between them. Well, and that's just, and that yeah, that's the problem. I think in, in Week Twelve, that's. They gave no help over the top, and Tyreek killed them. So now, on Sunday, they're going to have to do that with a safety, and then the middle of the field is open, and and Kelsey kills him. But how many weeks have we seen that Kelsey just destroy teams? Well, I mean, Bill- he's the best tight end in the planet, and nobody can cover him. The the Bills, I think, were like, okay, we'll just keep everything in front of us, and so the Chiefs just took it, like, okay, we'll just throw to Kelsey until you soften up. And, I literally and, thought Kelsey was going to fall over and pass out. He was throwing right, the ball somewhere. Jump in here and let you know that I just got a notice that I only have ten minutes left. So, you know how those notices go, Bob. Yeah, well, yes, but this time if it cuts it off and nobody gave their picks, then I got to write in the description. Here's who everybody picked. After you listen to all this rambling for forty <laughs> minutes, <laughs> all the nonsense. All right, like, Bob, start us off. Who are you picking? Eight, eight seven. Ten minutes. It's ten minutes. You know. Oh, Bob, come on. You're Sportsman Z. All right, all right. I am going. What's the score? All right, I'm going with the Chiefs, and I think they're going to win the game 30 to 24. Chiefs, 30 to 24. That's a close Super Bowl. I like it. 10 Bucker field goals. <laughs> 10 Bucker field goals. That's all it'll be. <laughs> Jimmy? I'm going. Uh... I'm going Bucks 35-31. Ooh. Uh, the tight end won't miss a won't miss a pass in the back of the end zone. It won't hit him in the chest and <laughs> like Super Bowl 12. Jackie just... Smith. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. That's scary. <laughs> what do you got, yeah, David? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Bucks 35-31. All right. Well, my my in my Super Bowl pool, I have the numbers eight and seven. Nice. Those Some are good goal. numbers to have. Yeah. Not for, not for the first quarter because the Chiefs never go for two. <laughs> right. So I'm going 8-7 Chiefs. Final. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go uh, – uh, let's see. <laughs> and you can, go, see, and you can not... see Arians after the game going, I should have gone for two. I knew yeah. I should have gone for two. <laughs> I you know I got I want the Chiefs to win. I feel like they 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 have the better team. I'm gonna but I'm gonna, I'll still go with them. I'll go Chiefs. Um, geez, it, I feel like I don't know. I don't twenty eight. I'll, I'll stick with my numbers. Twenty eight seventeen. Chiefs twenty eight seventeen. Jimmy, what was the score when the Eagles beat the Patriots? Oh God. Um... Like 48, 40, 38 or something like crazy like that, wasn't it? What, anyone remember? What? And the oh. Eagles beat the Patriots in what? In, in the, the Super Bowl. Bowl. Eagles never beat the Patriots. Oh, oh when the Bulls caught the pass? Yeah. Wasn't that the Eagles Patriots? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah what was that? Really special. Yeah. With Nick Ford. Yeah. 40, wasn't it like 44 to 38 or something? It was something. I think insane. they ended up winning by 11, though, I thought, for some, because they pulled away at the end and then, oh, maybe not. You're right. Yeah, it had to be closer because Brady had that. If you know, if you know what number Super Bowl it was, I'll ask my office assistant. 
I don't know what number Super Bowl was. It was oh, recent, okay. right? Three years ago. Was it 51? I don't know. Anyway, I think it's going to be something like that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Chiefs. This is what I'm going to go. Chiefs 45, Bucks 38. That's what I'm going. I just, I think, I think 45, 38. To hell rip up the Tampa night. Brady's going to keep the Bucks in it, but you can't, you can't stop Mahomes enough, and the Chiefs will win it. 41-33, Eagles. 41-33. So, yeah, maybe that's that's what I'll – maybe – so, yeah, 42-34 is what I'll end up with. 42-34, Chiefs is my call. All right. So, there was a lot of interesting discussion that everybody got here. We didn't even get to talk about your forehead. What <laughs> – Everybody, everybody knows about my forehead. All right, all right, all right. Well, fair enough. I just want to know what time the plane was landing this tonight. <laughs> I gotta fly for. I gotta leave this bar and get back to uh, get back home. So yeah, man. For a minute, I thought you took that right off the cover of sports. You know, I was like, holy cow, is that a throwback? But nah, it's a little different. So I, yeah, I gotta I gotta go uh, get some more backgrounds and uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like it. All yeah. right. Well, on that note, I'm gonna say that that is it for me, Sportsman Z Bob Zolke signing off. <laughs>